Hello and welcome to my channel. Chances are you have found me through my TikTok or Instagram. But if you are new here, hi, my name is Umeima and I'm a hyperrealism artist. If you are curious to see what I make, what I create, go ahead and check out my Instagram or TikTok. I have plenty of videos and artworks for you to enjoy. I'm super excited to finally, finally jump on this YouTube journey. I've been wanting to do this for the longest, longest time. And I do have a few old videos on this channel, but I never really was consistent with uploading videos. And I just want to pick it back up again and I want to provide you with longer videos where you get to see more of the progress of how my artworks are created, give you more insight and kind of like a behind the scenes look. This is also great timing because I'm starting a brand new artwork so you get to see the entire process from start to finish. In today's video I'm going to be working on the outlines as well as the background. So without further ado, let's just get right into the video. I always get asked about the type of paper that I'm using. It's watercolor paper by Arches. And honestly, I am so happy with the quality of this paper. It just works so well with graphite and charcoal. And while I was unrolling this paper, I actually realized that it was a little bit damaged. So I had to cut an entire piece off. But I'm going to use that for smaller drawings, probably for commissions or something like that. Um, but yeah, that whole part needed to be cut off. Guess who just woke up from their nap? Hi! <laughs> Good morning to you! Don't walk on it! Don't do it! No, 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 get back, get back, get back! I'm switching my content to creating more cool transitions from my TikTok and Instagram. So right now I'm recording some content. I need to flip this ruler, but it's not working. I need to flip it like that. It's not just one take, it's multiple takes, but you get that perfect shot that just results in the perfect video. So, so now let's actually start with the outlines of this artwork. I was actually planning to make this artwork super large. But unfortunately, with this paper roll that I have, I was really limited to how big um, I could make it. So, and I don't want to like buy an, an entire new roll of paper. I want to finish this one first. Um, but yeah, this is how large it's going to be. It's about an A0 plus or double A0. I'm not quite sure I'm going to put the dimensions on the screen. I always find the process at the start a little bit difficult, just trying to think of ways to make this piece come together. A lot of the times I'm using my imagination to add elements in there that weren't on my reference photo. And just the outlining process as a whole I find more difficult than the actual shading of the artwork. Which is funny because that's not difficult for it's the easiest, the shading is the real work. Um, but I have to say this process isn't really my favorite, I don't enjoy it as much. But drawing your outlines is an incredibly important process and always make sure that it looks perfect because if your proportions are off, the entire artwork is not going to look realistic. So I really take my time during this process to make sure that everything is looking on point before I actually start my shading. This is going to be the first piece ever that has a little bit of surrealism in there so I usually only create hyper realistic portraits but I'm adding a little bit of that surrealism vibe in there and also trying something new. I've never drawn antlers before so getting to know new textures is going to be interesting. I really like to watch the when it's raining. I open the window just so we can watch. You like it boy? reference photo that I've used you can see that the light is coming from that direction so the shadow falls on this side but on my reference photo it's actually the complete opposite the light is coming this way and the shadow falls on the other side as you can see on her face 
so that needs to match so I follow the reference photo when it comes to the shape of the antlers but when it comes to the shadows I'm actually doing the complete opposite of flipping that around so following the same um, light direction so it would fall this way the shadow would fall on the opposite way so that's why I changed it so I'll be adding a bunch of details like this on the antlers I wanted to add some flowers in her hair as well so I found a couple reference photo that I could use I just want to add this like right coming out from the antlers all around and I want some to be dragging along her hair It's been a few days since I last worked on my portraits and that is because I ordered some new charcoal sticks that I want to try out. I have the package right here, we're going to unpack in a minute. But I plan on creating a solid dark background for my portraits. I don't want to use the same techniques that I used in the past, I want to try something new. Possibly find an even darker or smoother charcoal than the one that I've been using, which is the Faber-Castell Compressed Charcoal 6. I'll be posting an entire drawing tutorial of my background with my exact techniques and even more in-depth explanation and real-time footage on my Patreon. It will probably already be up by the time you'll be watching this video. Click the link in the description down below and feel free to subscribe. You get to enjoy a ton of benefits so go ahead and check it out. Let's continue the process of the background and I'm going to show you the charcoal that I got. I just finished recording a full tutorial for my Patreon where I tested out different types of charcoal sticks as you can see right here. I always recommend you do this if you try something new and even if you just want to try a different technique that you haven't tried in a while or you got a new type of paper and you don't know how it's going to react to the tools that you already have, it's always a good idea to take out sheets of paper and just play around and find out what works best. I almost always do this before I apply anything to my actual artwork so this way I can avoid making any major mistakes that is going to ruin the entire piece. So now let's continue the process on my background. I was having so much fun working on this background since I got to use my hands. I usually would use another technique where I would make charcoal paint and then apply it with a brush. But since I got to use my hand, it was kind of messy and all over the place, but it did give me the exact result that I was looking for. I mean, look at that zone. It's absolutely beautiful. there's charcoal everywhere it's on the floor it's on my hands it's in my nose probably in my hair I don't care if it gets messy as long as I get the results that I wanted and I did I'm absolutely so happy with how the background turned out just like that we're basically done I did leave quite a lot of space between my subject and the background as you can see I was going around it in a shape because there are a lot of small details on the background and I need to be a lot more precise with my application to get the charcoal into those small spots. In order to do that I'm gonna use an application tool whether that's a brush or a sponge I'm not quite sure I'm gonna look into that in a little bit. Super impressed super happy with how the background turned out it's super smooth this charcoal is just incredible it's so soft so easy to move around it blends the paper absorbs it so well. I always do when I'm done like this, I put up my drawing on the easel. I kind of take a couple steps back and really analyze to see 
if the entire background is even. I might have put a little bit more charcoal in some spots, so you see that best when it's like put up on an easel or on your board, step back and really take a look at your drawing and see if your background is looking clean. So far so good, I am super excited to finally start working on my actual portrait, so I'm gonna continue this process in my next video. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one.